What I'm going to try and do um, for the next couple of minutes is talk through <clears throat> um, why we have these problems when we've got such great stuff to do. Uh, we share it with people, it doesn't always sustain. Why um, we've got organizations that can undo lots of good work um, overnight um, and how we can sort that out. Um, and as a corollary of that, I'm going to talk about why, for some reason, we've got all this research that shows this is the right thing to do, but seems to be completely ignored. So what do we do about that as well? So fingers crossed I'll get through that. So I want to share this framework with you, uh, which is really important when you understand why all this stuff happens and how to sort it. The way we think governs the systems we put in place, which governs what we get, performance. And we, we um, identify performance from the perspective of the citizen. So um, rather than the organization. So thinking system performance, um, I'm going to share a story with you to illustrate this. So the Edna is an 84 year old lady. This is a true story. She was 84 when we found this out. And um, she had care in the morning and the evening. And she spoke to her care in the evening and said, um, would you mind just taking my bins out, please? They're going to collect it in the morning. What do you think the carer said? Not allowed. That's right. It's not in the care plan. Not allowed. But you can phone social services uh, and they'll sort it out for you. So Edna does that. She <coughs> phones social services and she gets through to the call centre who are all very polite and lovely people. Uh, they're smiling when they're talking to you and all that sort of lovely stuff. And they say, um, hi, so-and-so social services, how can I help you? Oh yeah, I'd like someone to help you with my bin. Sorry, could I stop you there? Could I have your date of birth, please, and your address? Okay, and we've got all this recorded, so we heard all this. Um, Yes, how, how can I help you? Um, yeah, I'd like someone to help me take my bins out. All right, oh, hi, Edna, yeah, we know you. And because for various reasons, as you know, people come back and back and back in social care because we don't get it right. So we've got um, Edna on the phone now, and she says, oh, I want someone to take my bins out. They say, all right, so you want to make a referral to have your care plan amended so someone can bring the bins out. Um, I'm, yes, I guess so. <laughs> Just want my bins taken out. Great, we'll pass that on to the social workers and they'll sort that out for you. So they pass it to the social workers. Now, the social workers have learned that some of the stuff they get from the front end isn't very good, so they have a duty social worker who checks it all to make sure. As it happens, Edna's information is, is okay. So they pass it to the manager, who needs to allocate it, of course. Then it goes to the social worker. In this particular system, it goes back to the social worker who knows Edna, which is a good thing, but that's not always the case. It can go to a brand new social worker. Social worker says, yes, that's fine. The bins can be taken out. Take it back to the manager. There's admin steps in here as well, but it would take about 45 minutes to write them all. So um, manager then authorizes it, goes back to the social worker. Social worker then passes it to the brokerage team, who are the people who talk to the care providers. Brokerage team then send it to the care provider, to the manager, who sends it to the scheduler in the care provider, who then passes it to the carer, who takes the bin out. Yay! Hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> I haven't said where it is, but no. So um, the good news is that only took six weeks and only nine people need to be involved in that. But without dwelling too much, that's not really very good performance for all sorts of reasons. So what I want you to tell me now is what in the system has caused that to happen? What have they got in their system that causes that to happen? Rules, Rules? brilliant. What else have they got? Hierarchy. Hierarchy, brilliant. Success. Yep. So, uh, yeah, there'll be risk, um, risk procedures, yeah, policies. policies. <laughs> well, what in the system is caused that? Culture of fear. So what's, what have they got in the system? Cool. So there's disciplinary pr uh, processes, yeah, yeah, cool. Inflexibility. Yeah, and what's caused that? I guess, uh, in principle, the, care, the kind of defined care package cool. and things that fall inside that and the things that are falling out. Brilliant. Demand management. Yep. Demand management processes. Why have they, sp why are nine people involved? What have they, what have they done to their system? They've siloed it. Silos, yep. Yeah. Cool. Crisis. I've only got 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but they've created unnecessary work for themselves, haven't they? They're, they're, they're paying themselves to do things that nobody wants them to do. Well, that has. That has. Yeah, yeah. So but now we come somebody, to the fun bit. Somebody hasn't gone, actually, 
you find the people who collect the bins and they'll put you on a list and come and do it for you? So hold that thought. That's where we're going to now. So this is the key thing to this, because it's a very important point that you make there. Is what is the assumptions about how work should be designed and managed that has led to them put that stuff in? What do they think is the right way of designing and managing work that's led them to put that stuff in? People need to do the spare bits that they're... Brilliant. And what do they think that gives them by doing that? Quality. To do just their bit, yeah. Brilliant. Efficient, yeah, and quality. Very good at that bit. Cool. Yeah. Hence improving quality and being efficient. Fantastic. Yeah. What other logics have they got? Yeah, that's yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. Yeah. So they believe that is efficient and improves quality. Cool. And well, we'll go back to also links to employment rights and history of people So, so you know, they this is the only so this is the way to stop people being exploited. Brilliant, yeah. Yeah. Brilliant, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Quality of service. Mm. That everybody can get the same service. Yeah, everyone can get So give everybody the same. Sorry? Yep. So having the hierarchy, splitting it up into chunks gives us accountability. Fantastic. Yeah. No, so what's the current logic? That's brilliant. What's the current logic? Well, the current logic, Edna's asked for somebody to put a bin there and ask them what she wants without having conversations with Edna about to put her own bins out. Yeah. Is it a bit, did she used to put her own bins out? So we don't need to have a conversation, yeah. <laughs> What's the fundamental? Fantastic. Yeah. 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 So there's two things there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, this is where we get to the real cool stuff. Absolutely. We've got, this is how we design our system, but that's how we interact with people. We know best. We don't need to have conversations. We are the best people to do this. Now, the important thing about this, and this comes back to your lovely point earlier, is that our, the leaders who came up with this logic, do, do you believe they're evil or do they believe they're generally trying to do the right thing? Exactly. And they have worked very hard. It's a very busy place, <laughs> a very busy place. So this is really crucial because they believe doing this brings efficiency. They believe doing this reduces cost. They believe this is the right, it gets good outcomes and helps people with morale. But actually, when you look at it, that's not what it does at all. So their intent is correct. The method by which they're trying to achieve that is the problem. So these are assumptions, but they're assumptions that held in here. So I believe it is more efficient to split the work up into chunks. I believe I know best. Now, if you try and then have an argument with someone about that, what sort of things happens? They do. So now we move to how we solve all this problem. There's three ways of changing people's assumptions and helping them challenge them. There's rationally, coercively, and normatively. So rational is having an argument. Rational is talking to someone with a different view of Brexit of you, and you've all had those conversations, I'm absolutely sure, and if they didn't come to blows, you did very well. So I could go and talk to directors of social services and tell them they believe all that and it's causing problems, and they'd punch me in the face. Well, they can't do that, but they'd shout at me, maybe. So that's rational. It doesn't work. If you believe something differently, you have an assumption, a belief about something, the more you try and argue with that person, the more they will entrench their position. Coercive is, if you do it, I'll give you a bun, or if you don't do it, I'll give you a kicking. That doesn't change anyone's opinion or thoughts or assumptions, they'll just do whatever it takes to avoid the kicking or to get the bun. And we don't have coercive power over the organisations we're working with anyway, so it's of little use to us. Normative... 
you wrote coercive. I thought about the kicking, but I didn't think that actually giving a button is also... That's coercion too, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is normative, where someone has an experience for themselves and realises that their current assumptions are causing problems. So I don't write reports. I take directors of social services to go and study this. So that's my counsel to you, is the research will have zero effect on people, but if you can get them into the work to see the consequences of what's currently happening, they have an emotional reaction to it. And if they wake up at three in the morning, that's brilliant. If they're crying, that's even better. Yeah, because they've realized that their current assumptions aren't correct. So they then come up with other ones, which Bob has already told you about, change their system and create much better outcomes. And perfect for Edna is we don't mess around in Edna's life. We create a, a resilience around Edna. So she's got loads of people to help her with a bin and we get out of the way. So if anyone would like any advice, if you're in a situation where you need to get someone to do something differently, a leader or whatever, just give me a shout. I'm happy to help you if it would, if it is of use to talk about designing normative experiences for people so they can see that for themselves. Thank you for your time. Thank Sorry you. I ran over. Thank you very much. Cool.